delightful divar. Nestling on the west coast of India is the palm fringe state of Goa. Bathed by the blue waters of the Arabian Sea, Goa hides a number of picturesque villages that are steeped in history and tenaciously cling on to tradition that differentiates Goa from the rest of India. The island of Divar is one such. Divar has always enthralled its visitors. On the highest hillock of the island once stood an Ermida and citing it on his return to Goa after a battle around the year 1514, the Portuguese conqueror Afonso de Albuquerque exclaimed in happiness. It was a sign of Christianity a religion the Portuguese introduced to Goa. Today, five centuries later, the white facade of a church amidst a green background still draws admiring glances from miles away. And so we invite you to the island to fall in love with picturesque Divar, a land springing up in the estuary of the river Mandovi fringed with mangroves, dotted with paddy fields, abundant buns, intriguing sluice gates, shallow backwaters and clear ponds. Travelling eastwards, as you leave Panjim behind, you come upon a mile-long bridge built by the Portuguese, Conde de Linares. The further you proceed, you notice that the Mandovi branches out, leaving two distinct shores to the north of where you are. In this branching of the river arises from the waters of the Mandovi the island of Divar. Once you have rushed past the World Heritage Monuments at Old Goa, take a left turn at Gandhi Circle to seek out Divar. This is the Arch of the Viceroys, where the Portuguese Viceroys disembarked on their arrival to Goa. Centuries back, the waters of the Mandovi came up to here. Today, we walk a little way to reach the water's edge, where a ferry awaits to take us across to Divar. You can see the river bank on the other side from here and the ferry takes but a few minutes to put you there. When the Portuguese, who ruled Goa for 450 years, made Siddhat de Goa, now Old Goa, their capital, Divar gained in importance as a residential enclave. The ride across the placid waters of the Mandovi always an enjoyable experience. Here we are on the island of Divar, a place the denizen of which will describe as a poet's dream of the harmony of nature and man. The air here is absolutely pure. The fields in season green and the scent of the riverine vegetation so typical that all at once you are lulled into a relaxation and the travails of life are left on the far side of the river. Here you encounter neither traffic snarls nor parking headaches of the city. This is a truly refreshing place, unspoiled by crowds and untouched by the commercialization that torments Goa's tourist locales. 
Diwar's natural surroundings give it a most idyllic semblance and character. The island floats on water with the branches of the Mandovi lovingly embracing it. Its exclusiveness made possible by the absence of a direct motorable access has definitely saved the island from the highly commercialized tourism that afflicts the state. For the islanders, journey across the river on the ferry boat is an opportunity to exchange greetings and gossip. The island is a rich repository of archaeological sites, remnants of age-old temples, imposing old churches with beautiful altars, a dilapidated fort, millennia-old caves once inhabited by yogis, and palatial houses. The island is also a veritable bird sanctuary where many local birds chirp including parrots and occasionally a peacock. Divar traces its etymology to Devari, the ancient Dipavati, Devali or Devaling. The name of this veritable paradise refers to the Saptakadeshwara temple once found at Narva at the eastern end of the island. During the feast of the Saptakuteshwara temple, the entire island would be alight, giving it the appearance of the Diwali festival, hence Dipavati, Island of Lights. Yet another legend says there was a temple on a hill named Devale, and from it the island derived the name Diwali or Diwari. Divar is about a league long and two-fifths of a league wide. Its maximum height is 49.11 meters above sea level and much of the island constitutes of low-lying areas. Divar was formed by unification of land masses made possible by successive reclamations of several islets in one. This man-made marvel is the highest tribute to the ingenuity and sturdy nature of the Divard cars. Almost the entire reclaimed area is today used for cultivating paddy. But time has taken its toll. The fields are prone to flooding whenever the embankments are breached. The neglect of the protective bonds has written many a tragic story. The inflow of water is regulated at several points by means of sluice gates that open and shut automatically with the change in tides. Right here behind me is a sluice gate, what we in Konkani call Manos. This is a means of regulating water to and fro between the fields. Um, there are many such gates which in addition to maintaining the water level provide the villagers with loads of tasty mullet and white river prawn and crabs. A brilliant red sunset sky signals a rich harvest of fish. It is therefore not surprising to see many a divarkar fishing in the dark of the night with a kerosene lantern to light the way. The island is divided into four villages, each of them having originally its own komnidad. These are Malar, Naveli, Golti and Naroa. It has three parishes, that of Samatish in the village of Malar, Piedad which takes care of the pastoral needs of Naveli and Golti and that of Espirito Santo which covers the village of Naroa. The church of Samatish was built on the order of the Viceroy 
Dom Matthias de Albuquerque in honor of Saint Matthias, one of the apostles of Christ, between 1591 to 1597. In it reside the relics of Santu Cosmi and Santu Damiao, the twin Arab Christians, the precursors of the modern system of medicine. Here we are at the church of Nossa Senora de Piedra. Good day, Father. Alfie here. Uh, hi, Alfie. We've come to see the church of Diva. Welcome to my church of Diva. Thank you, my Please make it. It was built in 1700 and took 24 years to complete. Father Antonio Joao de Frias being the brain behind it. This church is perhaps one of the best specimens of the Indian Baroque in Goa. A three-story high facade gives it solidity. An image made of black stone of Nossa Senora de Piedad adorns the facade of the church. Its interior depicts a marvel of Baroque harmony. It has five altars, the main dedicated to Nossa Senora de Piedad. The altars on the left are dedicated to Bon Jesus and to Nossa Senora de Boa Morte, and those on the right to Santa Agatha and to the Santa Almas. The controlled and uncomplicated design of the Rereros of the main altar find repetition in the side altars. The vault is of the planned grain variety, more successful perhaps than the others of its type. It also combines the strength and empaneled geometry of the semicircular Roman vault with the sore and the airiness of the ribbed Gothic without the former's ponderous masses and the latter's continuum of disrupting ribs. This results into an elegant weightlessness of volume and thus the light is evenly distributed over the interior creating a shimmer of whiteness accentuated by the minuteness and the silvery texture of the stucco relief. It was in this church of Nossa Senora de Piedad that in 1920 was found a painting of Our Lady of Divar dating back to the year 1530. This beautiful painting is credited to the early Portuguese painters soon after the conquest of Goa. Besides the church at Piedad, there are other chapels as well. In the chapel of Senor Redemptor at Saibawado, one finds the statue of Nossa Senora da Dorish, which was brought to the chapel from the church of St. Francis of Assisi at Old Goa. It has also a life-sized image of Christ the Redeemer. This statue has an interesting legend associated with it. The image had been offered to a Goan by his employer abroad, who brought it along with him to Goa. The authorities refused it passage through customs unless it was weighed. When they set about to weigh it, the image had miraculously turned weightless. Another version says that the box was found empty by the officials, but that the statue reappeared later. This chapel has an interesting facet as the feast year is celebrated by the entire village, no matter which parish they may belong to. The Church of Espiritu Santo was constructed in 1710 in the medieval style. Close by are the remnants of a Mohammedan fort built by the Sultan of Deccan around the 12th century. It is of considerable length, over 800 meters, and even today its ruins reveal the massiveness of the former fortress. 
the chapel of Nossa Senhora de Candelaria, constructed in 1563 in the early European Baroque style, has today an extension in complete contrast to the chapel's grandeur and architectural elegance. In addition to all these churches and chapels, there are various crosses scattered all over the island. These crosses ring out with the sound of litanies. It is a practice to hold a litany at least once a year. And the religious ceremony is followed by a tot of penny and some boiled grams distributed among the participants. Merged with the destiny of Divar is the tiny island of Vashi, also known as Ilia di Kapao. The island has two other temples, one at Vanzue, dedicated to deity Bhavika Devi, and draws the faithful who participate in ceremonies with much fervor. Another dedicated to Lord Ganesha, a mere 200 meters from the Piedad church, was erected in memory of an ancient temple in the area, on land donated by Custodio Manuel Pereira and his wife Lily, an excellent example of Hindu-Christian harmony that certainly exists on the island. Divar is famous for musicians and composers. सगळ्यात म्हणून मजबूत आमच्याच वाड्यात पैसे दोत तू दहा घोरा हा पण तातून आठ घोरांनी मजबूत आमचे हे ट्रॅडिशन पण असा आमच्या पूर्वजांनी दिलेले आहा ते आम्ही सांभाळून दोरूंक जाय आणि जात ते भाषेन ते मोरूंक देऊ फाव ना गोवाज बेस्ट लव्ह सॉंग द देखणी ओरिजिनेटेड हिअर द स्टोरी गोज दॅट वन ऑफ द टेम्पल सर्वंट्स ऑर भाबिन हू हॅड कन्व्हर्टेड टू कॅथोलिसिझम was invited to the wedding of a former divardkar who had fled to Narwa of Bicholi to maintain his religion. Narvatar is the scene of Hau Saiba Pultori Veta, a dance without which a cultural program in Goa is incomplete. Another dulpod, Luisinia Mojia Luisinia, also originated in Divar and has a tragic story behind it. The island has retained a perfect Goan character, its ethos being cent per cent Goan. Its traditions and their continuity have survived unscathed by the many influences that have erased the Goanness of so many other villages in the state. You can still, walking down the road, be hailed by a loud greeting in Portuguese from the balcão of a home and be invited for a chat. Old traditions are rooted deeply in the soil of Divar and are celebrated with gusto, the most colorful of them all being the harvest festival called Bondera. This festival predates the arrival of the Portuguese and its origins are remote, having arisen out of the conflicts related to encroachments along the borders of the lands of the various comunidades. The passage of time resulted in a gradual mellowing of attitudes, and the era of conflicts gave way to the festival of Bondera. Today, the same villagers 
aimed their resolve at each other's flags with the fortas, a sort of an air rifle that uses wild berries called tefoa as ammunition. It is a day of festivity for the Divadkar and the flag march has been converted into a cultural festival with the islanders competing in a tableau competition. What is your name? So drink and be merry. Make merry where the sun shines and also in the sunsets. Make merry where the sun shines, whether her name is Mary or Sandra. This festival, as well as other cultural programs, are organized under the banners of local youth associations. Another important cultural festival is the carnival celebration, where persons dressed as clowns, locally called potekar, regale the villagers with their antics. Being an island, traditional occupations of the islanders have been fishing and farming in the reclaimed lands. The island is self-sufficient in many ways and most of the homes have their own kitchen gardens. Fruits of all kinds can be found here and mangoes in particular are grown in abundance. Another age-old occupation is sweetmeat making. Divar is famous for the very popular variety of sweets known as khaje and kadio bodio in Konkani. Divar has been the cradle to many an illustrious son of Goa and they have included politicians, diplomats, historians, writers, scientists, jurists, doctors, theologians, educationists and others. The first Goan bishop, Dom Matthias de Castro, 1609 to 79, came from Divar. He lived in this house, which his family still occupy. There have been other bishops, celebrated among them are Bishop Dom Tomas de Castro, Dom Caetano Antonio Pereira, Father Jacom Gonçalves, a missionary who succeeded Blessed Joseph Vaz in Sri Lanka and continued the missionary work there. It is in his house that the school Our Lady of Divar is housed in today. In recent times, we have had Professor Armando Menezes, a writer and poet of repute, and Simao Vicente de Quadros, who founded the Asilo of St. Francis Xavier in 1884 and which exists still. There is no lawlessness on the island. There is no police station and economic life is definitely on the up. This documentary will not be complete if we fail to mention the passionate game of all Goans, football. There are around eight teams in the village, three football grounds, and scores of promising great footballers of the future. And may the Divarkar, who resolutely defends the island from unseemly development, pass on their trait to his descendants too.